Hello, welcome to video 22-1, Nuclear Terms and Symbols, Mass Defect, Stability and Nuclear Decay. Nuclear, it's pronounced nuclear. So, chapter 22, Nuclear Chemistry. Okay, now, some terms and symbols. Some of these you guys have seen before, some of them will be new. Okay, now, a nucleon, you guys have seen this term before. Anything in the nucleus, which is basically a proton or a neutron. A nuclide is any particular atom or, um, more specifically, the nucleus of the atom. Okay. Nuclear binding energy. This is energy released when a nucleus is formed from nucleons. In other words, when, when protons and neutrons actually come together, energy gets released. Okay. And it's the same as the amount of energy needed to break apart the nucleus. So. If you wanted to separate the protons and neutrons, you'd have to add this amount of energy, okay, the nuclear binding energy. And binding energy per nucleon. Basically, binding energy divided by the number of nucleons in the nuclide, in the nucleus of the atom. Okay. Now, we can symbolize elements by writing either um, numbers to the left of it. Don't forget the top number is the mass number okay, and the bottom number is the atomic number. Or we can write the symbol for the element with a hyphen and then A which is also going to be the mass number. Okay, So examples okay, of our subatomic particles. Now instead of using P for the proton we use H. Okay, Why? Well if we just think about the nucleus of basically hydrogen one, protium. Okay. The nucleus is basically one proton surrounded by one electron. Okay. So if we just look at the nucleus of it, it's basically just the proton. Okay. Neutrons one over zero, electrons zero over negative one. Okay. Now we come up with a new particle known as a positron. In terms of mass, positrons and electrons are exactly the same mass. Difference, these are your nuclear charges or charges on the particle. Electrons have a negative one charge, positive, positrons, positive one charge. Okay, so a couple examples of how we can write our elements. Radium 228 or 228 over 88. And remember, number of neutrons is equal to the atomic or the mass number minus the atomic number. Okay, in other words, top number minus the bottom number. So if we were to subtract the two of these, okay, and you do not have to write them as staggered. You can write them as 228 over 88 RA. Okay, reason why it's staggered is because when you do it in a uh, word processing program, you can't put two numbers over each other. Okay, so if you subtract them, basically you come out with 140. Okay, now, we have something known as the mass defect. Okay, masses of protons, you saw this before in previous chapters. One proton, 1.007276 amus. Neutrons, slightly heavier. Okay, and electrons, way smaller. Okay, now, one amu is 1.6605 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Okay, and remember this. If you have units of kilograms meters squared, whoops, let's write like this, kilograms times meters squared over seconds squared, that is basically the same as one joule. Okay, you, joules are just units of energy. Okay. Now, the expected mass of a helium atom, okay, helium-4. Basically, 4 over 2 means you got two protons, the mass number is 4, so two neutrons, electrons are going to be the same as the number of protons. Okay, should come out to be 4.032979 AMUs, okay, if we use the masses of the protons, neutrons, and electrons that you saw on the previous screen. Okay, now, little problem. Take the actual mass of a helium-4 atom, it's 4.002600, okay, not really that close. Okay, so why? Okay, well, for every single atom, not just helium, every single atom has something known as a mass defect. 
okay, difference between the mass of the actual atom and the mass of the protons, neutrons, and electrons that make up the atom. Okay, the atom will always weigh less than the sum of the protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay, so why is there a mass defect? Why does the atom actually weigh less than all the protons, neutrons, and electrons? Okay, and don't forget, energy has to be used to hold the nucleus together. Okay, now where now where did this energy come from? Okay, this is called the binding energy of the atom. And remember Einstein. Okay, I finally learned how to pronounce his name. Okay, e equals mc squared. Okay, now E is the binding energy. Well, where did the binding energy come from? Well, we lost some mass, so guess what happened with that mass? It turned into the energy. Okay, so M is the mass defect of the atom in kilograms, though. Okay, and C is the speed of light. Okay, now notice if you use the units that you see here, mass is in kilograms. C is in meters per second, but you have to square it. So the units will turn out to be kilograms times meters squared over second squared. And we just said that was the same as a joule. Okay. Now, uh, the binding energy for different atoms starts to increase, okay? but it doesn't continuously increase. It reaches a maximum near a mass number of around 60. Okay, so here's a little problem. Find the nuclear binding energy for the helium-4 atom and the binding energy per nucleon. Okay, well, what do we need to know? First thing you need to know, what is M? Okay, what is the mass defect? Okay, so let's go back and find it. This is the total mass. This is the expected mass. Okay, the actual mass, 4.000260. So let's go find the difference. Point zero three two nine seven nine. Okay. Subtract it. And you should come out with... Okay, so what is this? The difference between what we expect and the actual? This is the mass defect. Okay, now I cannot just simply plug that into the E equals MC squared equation. This, don't forget, has to be in kilograms. So we need to do some dimensional analysis. Point, whoops. 0.32719 AMUs times, I want to go change it into kilograms and get rid of AMUs. Okay. And our equality was 1 AMU was 1.6605 times 10 negative 27 kilograms. So when we plug all that stuff in, okay, and don't forget, use your EE key when you're entering scientific notation. Okay, this comes out to be 10 to the negative 29th kilograms. Okay. Now we can plug it into e equals mc squared. Okay. So 5.43298995 times 10 to the negative 29th times c 3.00 times 10 to the 8th. Okay, this is kilograms, this is meters per second, don't forget to square only that number. And you come up with 4.0 uh, 
um, let's see, 4.89 times 10 to the negative 12, and the units are kilograms meters squared over second squared, so joules. Okay, next thing we look at, stability and nuclear decay. Now, stable nuclides will not undergo radioactive decay. Okay, and the stability, what makes something radioactive and not radioactive? It has to do with the ratio of neutrons to protons. Okay. For low atomic numbers, basically atomic numbers below 20 or so, the ratio of neutrons to protons has to be close to a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay. Now, as you start getting larger atomic numbers, adding more protons, you need more neutrons to stabilize it. So the ratio has to start getting bigger. Okay. And it starts to increase and the ratio gets closer to 1.5 neutrons for every proton. Okay. And there is something known as a band of stability, which you'll see in the next slide. Okay. And it basically shows you um, which isotopes are stable for a particular element, for a particular atomic number. Okay. And there's things called magic numbers that tend to appear. You don't need to memorize them, basically just know what they are. Stable things tend to have, first of all, if you notice, they're all even. Okay? Even numbers of protons, even number of neutrons, or even number of total nucleons, or these numbers okay, tended to make a nuclide stable also, if they had that number of protons, or that number of neutrons, or that number of total nucleons. Okay? Now, this is the band of stability. Okay, this is basically number of neutrons, this is the number of protons. So, in the low numbers, when they're in the 1 to 1 ratio, basically below 20, okay, they're all stable. As the numbers start getting bigger and bigger, they need to have more neutrons per proton. Okay, so all these are stable isotopes. Okay, and this line basically would be, if everything was along this line, it would be in a 1 to 1 ratio. Notice the band starts deviating in a positive direction, meaning it's a bigger slope. Okay, and up here the slope will probably be close to 1.5. Okay, now, above atomic number 83, okay, there are no stable elements. Okay, and number 83 is bismuth. So anything with a larger atomic number than bismuth does not have any stable nuclides. In other words, it's a radioactive element. Okay. If it's unstable, the substance will undergo radioactive decay. Okay. Now, what is radioactive decay? It's basically a change in the nucleus. Okay. Why is it doing that? Because it's unstable. It wants to become stable. Okay. So, spontaneous nuclear reaction um, into which a nucleus changes into a different one accompanied by emission of particles, electromagnetic radiation, or both. Okay, now, what, what makes radioactivity so dangerous? Okay, it's usually these particles or electromagnetic radiation. Okay, this process is also known as transmutation, okay, the process of a nucleus changing. Okay, now, types of decay that you can have. First one, alpha decay. Alpha decay, basically a helium nucleus gets shot out of the, um, the, an alpha particle is a helium nucleus. This particle gets shot out of the bigger particle, out of the nucleus that's undergoing radioactive decay. Okay. So, helium, don't forget, we actually write an alpha particle as 4 over 2 Ag. Okay. So, this is an alpha particle. So, how do you write reactions? It's really, really simple. Okay. You have to be told what kind of decay you have, but then you can write out the reaction. Okay, so polonium-210 undergoes alpha decay. So what happens? You produce an alpha particle, 4 over 2 He. Okay, plus, now, how do you figure it out? Well, the top numbers have to add up to the top numbers. The bottom numbers have to add up to the bottom numbers. Okay, so what plus 4 will give you 210? 206. Okay, what plus 2 will give you 84? 82. Okay, 82. 82 plus 2 gives you 84. 206 plus 4 gives you 210. Simple as that. Last thing you need to do though, and if you don't do this, the problem's wrong. What element is that? How do you figure it out? Simple. 
look up the atomic number. Number 82 is lead. Okay, and that's it. Okay, beta decay. Basically, what happens is a neutron turns into a proton and it shoots out an electron. Okay, a beta particle is basically an electron. Okay, what's happening? A neutron turns into a proton, we're adding this hydrogen, okay, plus an electron, zero, negative, one, E. This leaves the whole nucleus. Okay, and this is what you detect. So, how do you write a beta decay reaction? Okay, well, carbon-14 undergoes beta decay, so it shoots out an electron, zero, negative, one, E, okay, or this can also be written as zero, negative, one, beta. Okay, same thing, make sure the top numbers add up. Okay, 14 plus zero will give you 14, and be careful with this one. Negative one plus your number has to equal six, so we need seven. Okay, atomic number seven is nitrogen. Okay, positron emission. Okay, a positive electron, basically. Okay, and it's emitted, it's basically the opposite. Instead of a neutron turning into proton in the beta, a proton, 1 over 1 h, turns into a neutron. 1 over 0 n plus, and notice the numbers still add up, 0, positive 1, e. Okay, or it can also be written 0 over 1 beta. Okay, that's a positron also. Okay, here's our example. Potassium 38 undergoes positron emission. So you get a positron, 0, 1, and let's use the beta sign instead this time. Okay, plus add up your numbers. 38 plus 0 will give you 38. Okay, 18 plus 1 will give you 19. Element 18 is argon. Okay, electron capture. Okay, an inner orbital electron, basically from the 1s, falls into the nucleus okay, and combines with a proton to give you a neutron. So in other words, okay, an electron combines with a proton and turns into a neutron. Okay, and notice the numbers will still add up. 1 on the top, 0 on the bottom, n. Okay, now, electron capture. The electron is captured, it's not emitted, so it's actually one of the reactants. Okay. It's a reactant. And what do you how do you figure it out? Do the exact same thing. Add up the numbers on the left side, has to equal the numbers on the right side. 106 on top, 47 minus 1 will give you 46. Okay. And that is palladium, PD. Now, gamma ray emission. Okay, high energy electromagnetic radiation. When we talked about light, remember gamma rays is a type of photon. Okay, usually accompanies other types of decay, okay, and rarely are you going to get it by itself. Okay, so, write the reactions for these. Neptunium-238 undergoes beta decay. Radium-226 undergoes alpha decay. And oxygen-17 undergoes positron decay. Okay, so try these on your own, and we'll go over them in class. And now, on to the review. What happens to the mass defect? 